So, my wife and I have finally decided that it's time that we did something about our boring, plain white stair railings. But, we own dogs. And one of our dogs decided that, while he was still a puppy, that he had a thing about chewing on the corner of our stair railings. I mean, that's nothing. He did that one all the way across, even to there. And that, he had a thing about drywall too. That'll probably be a different video. So, I thought I would take this opportunity to share with you guys the method that I use to fix trim like that. I mean, it's pretty complicated, takes some specialized tools, but I think you can handle it. So this kind of repair is actually pretty simple. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is take some, just a piece of sandpaper, this is just some 220 grit, and I'm just gonna use this to sand down the damaged area a little bit, just to get rid of any dirt, any loose wood fibers, or anything like that. And that's gonna allow the next steps to adhere better to the damaged area. Now you're not looking to obviously take it all the way down and completely sand the whole area. That's really all you're looking to do is just just clean it up. Once that's done, I'm just going to take a, a rag, you can even something a little damp, and just clean it out. Next, I'm going to take some wood glue. It's just some some tight bond that I had in the in the garage. You're just gonna put a little bit on. You're not gonna put a whole lot. You're looking to just do a light coat of glue in the in the damaged area. And what this is gonna do is allow the next, because this is such a shallow area, it's gonna help the wood stain or wood filler adhere better to the damaged area. And I just prefer to use the stuff in a in a squeeze tube just because it's a little bit easier to work with. You can get a lot less out. It doesn't take a lot. You're just going to work the wood filler into the damaged area. Now, it's not going to be pretty. It doesn't need to be pretty. You actually want it to sit just a little bit above the surface. You kind of want to overfill it a little bit because you're going to come back once this is dry and sand it down to the surface level of the surrounding wood. Now that I've got everything filled, I'm gonna give it time to dry. Once it sets up, then I'll come back and sand it smooth. As for this more damaged area, it's obviously gonna take more effort. Uh, I'm gonna sand the area down with some 120 grit, go a little more aggressive on the sandpaper just to really get it cleaned up. And then I'm gonna do this in several applications. Um, just because it's so damaged, I don't wanna try to fill in these deeper areas with a lot of wood filler. I'd rather do it in thinner coats. It'll make for a stronger bond, a stronger repair, and it'll just last better in the long run. So, but the process is gonna be the same. I'm gonna sand it down, get, a, let, get rid of any loose wood fibers, any dirt that's in there, anything like that. Do the wood glue, and then I'll do the wood putty. But between the wood putty applications, I'm not gonna sand it in between. I wanna leave it rough, and that'll allow the, the subsequent coats to build upon itself and adhere better. But I'm still gonna do probably wood glue between the coats. So I'm gonna start with 120 grit, and then start building this area back up. Once that's had some time to dry, 
I'll come back and do a second coat. Again, I'll probably do another treatment of wood glue and then the wood putty. All right, so after letting the wood putty cure for a few hours, I actually let it set up overnight, but it would have been good probably after about four hours or so. I came back with some sandpaper wrapped around a, a scrap piece of wood. This is just some 120 grit. So I could keep the, the sandpaper flat. I sanded from the good area out past the damaged area. I didn't want to sand into the damaged area because I didn't want to risk pulling any of the wood putty out from the out from the repair. And then I was able to sand the top here to the to the contour just to get it all sanded smooth. And there are the results. It looks like there's an edge there, but that is perfectly smooth. Uh, once that's painted, that'll uh, never be noticed. As for the more damaged area, this took a little more effort. Um, I actually came back about every every four hours or so and did another layer of wood glue and wood filler without sanding in between the coats. I wanted it to be rough just to help the subsequent layers adhere better. Um, but as you can see, I got everything masked off. I'm actually getting ready to paint. Um, but this I just I built up. You know, about every four hours or so once the previous layer was, was dry enough. And then I actually sanded this first with about some 120 grit just to really knock it down. I built it up pretty far past the, the surface of the original wood and uh, knock it down with some 120 grit. Came back with 220 or no, sorry, about with 180 I think it was after the 120 just to smooth it out. And again... You can see I've got it masked off, ready to be painted. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. I think once this gets painted, this one won't won't show up either. So there you have it. Super simple repair. It doesn't take any special tools and really no time at all. And there you can see the beginning of my my stair rail painting project. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe. Hit the bell. And I'll see you on the next one.